If I may, I'd like to share some observations regarding the paintings of Claude Monet. If you think of Monet in the context of the painting movement of his time before he created Impressionism, uh, this painting, which is the first Impressionist painting, is transformative and incredibly innovative and daring. Here's an example of the reigning style of what's known as the uh, Romantic uh, art movement. And I don't know about you, but personally, this style of painting bores me to death. Uh, this idealized view of, of reality. And there's nothing to it. There's no shape or form. Yeah, you've got these framing devices on either side. I get it. But there's no, there's nothing here that I would really want to look at. On the other hand, you've got this. And imagine showing up at an art show with a painting like this when the reigning style is this. People must have just laughed when they saw this because uh, they thought it was, you know, just sort of sloppy kind of finger painting. <laughs> The amazing thing, one of the amazing things uh, about Claude Monet is that by reducing subjects and the depiction of reality to a more shape-oriented imagery, and by his impressionist uh, brushstroke style that, of course, he innovated, I feel that Monet is imbuing an emotional state onto the canvas that uh, uh, p uh, painters were previously not uh, capable of, of doing. And of course, Monet is known around the world for his uh, color choices. Well, the very sort of lush and seductive colors that he used, uh, especially in his... Uh, Later paintings at his uh, home in Gverney, you know, with the lily pads on the pond and the flowers and so forth. All those uh, lush colors that he's really uh, well known for. But on top of the innovations of Impressionism and the brushstroke style of Impressionism and his color palette, the other thing that was amazing about Monet was his precise use of geometry. And even in his first Impressionist painting here, this groundbreaking painting, you can see that he has organized the composition according to the brightness weight illusion and asymmetrical balance. So if I may, I'd like to kind of give you my breakdown of how I feel this image is structured or composed or balanced. So on the right, I mean, if we split this picture in half, that's the middle of the picture right about there. On the right, you have uh, the most intense shape and color on the canvas, which is the sun and then the reflection of the sun here. And then you have this uh, large dark shape here that looks to have some cranes on it. Maybe it's a boat or maybe it's a port. I don't know, doesn't really matter. But these two shapes, or I, I guess three, one, two, three, are basically the weight of the image. And then over on the left, you have this very dark uh, boat here. Let's just call it an object. It's the darkest shape in the painting that serves as a counterweight to the sun, the reflection of the sun, and uh, this shape here. But of course, by itself, even though it's a very dark color, which we understand from the brightness weight illusion, uh, carries a lot of psychological weight. 
it's not enough by itself to counterbalance all of this stuff here. So he put another boat here and kind of a vague impression of a boat here. And then you've got this, uh, these smokestacks and the smoke over here on the left. But this shape here, although it's kind of similar in size to this one over here, it's lighter in tone. So it doesn't carry as much weight. So basically, I feel that this image is composed, uh, he, what he's saying geometrically or intellectually or mathematically is this plus this plus this equals this, 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 and that. That's kind of how I, I see this. The other thing that's really fun about understanding balance and the brightness weight illusion is that now you can look at art and see see it not just on the emotional level and certainly uh, Claude Monet's paintings have a wonderful emotion to them but there's also this intellectual part of it as well the mathematical the geometrical aspect and that's really what this channel is all about is that I want to kind of reintroduce these concepts that somehow have been lost. I want to reintroduce them into common knowledge so that everyone can now see paintings like this and enjoy them on a whole other level. Yes, enjoy the emotional aspect of the painting, but also see it for the geometrical and, and enjoy that too and kind of understand get into the mind of the painter and see uh, what they were thinking about and how they were uh, solving problems to make the image work so that all the parts of the image are ostensibly working together this is not simply like in the case of this painting this is kind of a, a mechanical recording of a scene and then you know kind of idealized just yeah <laughs> i'm not going to say anything more about that but this one this takes it to a whole other level uh, i've already talked about the style but then there's the geometry as well and the neat thing about monet is that number one he had these concepts out of the gate this is the first example of an impressionist painting in the world and right out of the box he had these concepts down cold but then as he continued to work uh, every painting that i've seen from him exhibits the understanding and use of these concepts uh, let's take a look at another one this is another uh, old favorite of mine that I, I've enjoyed looking at for decades. But do you see how this uh, uh, image, you know, okay, so the the colors and the brush strokes and, and, and the scene, it's an interesting uh, setting for a painting. But now look at it from a geometrical or a structural perspective, the form of this image. How is it constructed? How is it constructed? Can you can you see how uh, Monet balanced the two parts of this image so that they're working in concert with each other, like musicians in an orchestra creating a symphonic sound? This is a visual symphony that we're looking at here. Can you see it? Well, let's uh, and. and uh, hopefully you've, you've taken a moment to kind of consider that and let's see if uh, our perspectives line up if they don't that's totally okay as long as you're thinking about and seeing it on this level uh, that means that you're getting that much more out of looking at art so obviously the uh, steam engine here over on the right is uh, really the the major weight of the image it's the biggest, darkest object. And of course, you've got people lining up to get on over here as well. So you might say that this is the small dark area. And it's uh, counterbalanced by a large bright sky. But interestingly, the roof over here on the left is dark. But the roof over here on the right is made uh, brighter 
by the uh, smoke coming out of the smokestack of the engine. So basically, this is counter. This weight is counterweighted by this uh, shape over here, which is the roof. So this is small, but it's really dark. So it has a lot of psychological weight. This is uh, quite dark, uh, but not as dark as the engine, but it's a larger shape. So the two, I feel, are working in relationship to each other to counterbalance uh, this image. And those are the two, for me, the, the two major structures that uh, make this painting uh, work from a, a balanced perspective. Now, as you look at this painting further, of course, you see that this painting and paintings in general, whether they're representational or whether they're abstract, like uh, Willem de Kooning, who is fantastic at balancing a uh, complex image. And I'll make a, a video about uh, de Kooning uh, and, and Pollock later. But a good painting, when you think about it this way, is really like a puzzle where all the parts are working together to create a, uh, uh, a balanced experience for the viewer. All these parts here and here and here and here, all of these have been carefully considered. All the problems have been solved. You know, when I looked at this painting the first time, I remember back in my 20s, I looked at this and I, I loved it. I loved the feeling the emotion uh, that this uh, exuded uh, with its uh, brushstroke style, very daring brushstroke style, and, and the colors, and, and the fact that it's um, a, uh, a train station in the 1800s uh, also gave me a kind of a feeling of nostalgia. But I didn't realize that there was also this uh, precise use of geometry going on. And uh, hopefully, um, through these videos, you're starting, you're, you're getting a, a really good sense of this so that you can not only uh, enjoy art on a whole other level and see this kind of, <laughs> it's like this language that's been hiding in plain sight all this time. And I didn't know about it. And uh, I'm hoping that you're seeing it. And you can also use these ideas to create your own imagery. Uh, certainly when I understood this stuff, it completely changed uh, my ability and uh, increased my ability to consistently create images that uh, convey what I was trying to say. So I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, please, uh, if you uh, are motivated to do so, I would encourage you to uh, like uh, and uh, subscribe and uh, feel free to comment, ask questions, or give your own interpretation of uh, the structure of this, uh, these images that we looked at. Thank you.